So yeah, it's just to say thank you so much for joining us on this Friday morning. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Kayleen Harrington and I recently joined the Norfolk Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm their event manager, um, so look after all of their events. So I really hope you're enjoying what we have put on and what we're going to put on. I'm also really excited to let you know that we've recently launched our brand new recovery programme which is a set of virtual events which support businesses to restart, rebuild and renew. You can find all our full offering of events on our website. I'll also put a link in the chat function, so feel free to view these after the webinar and book on any. They're completely free to attend. I'm also really excited um, that Catherine, the CEO of Turning Factor, will be doing one of these recovery events. So I'll again include those details in the chat function. So no one said it was easy. Taking the step up into management role can be a difficult one. There is a transi transition from team member to a manager that can be very challenging and daunting. What do you do? How do you make the right impact? How do you go from being one of the team to leading them? Key to this is understanding that your success as a manager depends now not just on how well you do your job, but how well you get things done through other people. So in this free to attend 60 minute webinar, Alex Sellers, Director of Turning Factor, will provide you with the understanding to be better prepared for the challenges you face. You're welcome to ask him questions during the presentation. There'll also be live Q&A afterwards. So please use the Q&A function when you have questions. So before I hand over to Alex and while I remember, I'm just gonna be doing background bits. So just chasing any people that haven't um, registered. So if you see my face go like this, it's not because I'm not listening, I'm just in the background admin. Um, so, Alex, over to you. Thank you, Kayleen. Um, so hopefully everyone can, can hear me okay. Kayleen, can you give me a thumbs up? Am I coming through loud and clear? Yes, excellent. All right, happy Friday. Um, great to, to see you all here. Um, for those of you that have got next week off, nice one, me too. That's I'm really looking forward to that. Um, those of you that haven't, um, have a good week. Uh, anyway, so we're going to look at something today that is um, that's that's in essence really simple. Um, you know, it's 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 when we put this together, we tried to we tried to get um, um, pull out the key sort of elements of what it's like to step into that role of of, of a manager and, and start to have to lead a team of people and to start to have those la layers of responsibility. So this is it's simple, but it's also a massive topic. So I've kind of sort of narrowed it down into three key areas, which is what you can see in front of you today. We're going to have a look at the, the skills that are required. Um, we're going to look at a particular model that may help. Um, and then we're going to we're going to go through some key considerations. So there's a couple of things about today I just wanted to run through. So my name is Alex. I work for Turning Factor. Um, I have been managing people um, for better or for worse since I was about 21 years old, which is way too long now. Um, and, you know, I love it. And I think it's, a, it's, I think it's a fantastic career and I've been through lots of challenges. I'm hoping today that maybe some of the things that I've been through and been able to learn might be able to help, 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 help you um, go away with some skills. So the key thing today, a couple of things that I just really want to bear in mind. Number one, keep it as interactive as possible. There'll be a period, there'll be periods when I ask you to put things into the chat. I'm really keen to, um, to, to hear your stories, to know your challenges and your considerations. So please do that. And I can see people putting things in there straight away. Um, we're going to run a poll in a second. Um, and really, I'm looking, I'm hoping that you guys can walk away with maybe one or two things that you can take into your workplace and just, and just help really, and just do something different. I mean, that's the key with these webinars. It's not just about sharing knowledge. It's all about increasing your ability, your skills and your practical ability. So, you know, if there's something that strikes you, if you get an aha moment, if you think anything, oh, I might try that then do it, you know, go back out into your workplace, try something different um, because that's the way you'll develop and that's the way you'll continue to, um, to get better and better at what you do. So, so I suppose let's just start really. What is what is this thing management? Um, leading people, um, taking on responsibilities for for a team and for 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 the progress of a business. I think one of the things I've found in 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 my in my experience is that a lot of people become manager because managers because they're very good at what they do. They may have lots of technical skills. Um, they may have been in the role for a long time. It, it's perhaps their time. Um, they've displayed an 
uh, you know, an attribute towards something and they've been promoted, or they've been given a responsibility for a team of people. Um, and that's great and that's fantastic. And, and, and actually that's some of the things we would advise that concept of promoting from within is, 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 is so very important. Um, but there's a challenge that comes with that. And, and that challenge is that um, you, you, some people go from, from, from being responsible for what they do and their tasks and how well they perform to suddenly having a group of people and being responsible for how well a group of people perform. And that's the key difference. When we step into that manager's role, I think people sometimes underestimate that it's a totally different job. It's a totally different set of skills. Um, and really your success depends on how well you can coordinate and motivate other people to perform their roles. And that's a big step. You know, and that's a step that some people, you know, perhaps they're not, they don't know it's coming, perhaps people aren't ready. And, and that has a series of skills that are attached to it. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to try and identify some of those, some of those skills. So what, what I'd like for you to do um, is, I, I, do you know what, I'm going to open a poll, okay? So this poll is just really, really simple. It's one question. There's no right or wrong, okay? So all I want you to do, I want you just to put down what you think the hardest element of management is, okay? What is it? Is it, is it just knowing what to do and, and, and covering all those different things? Is it actually the people side of it? Is it the time, having enough time to get everything done? Um, or is it the motivation side, you know, getting people to, to do things? You know, what, what do you find the hardest thing about, about management? And bearing in mind, oftentimes when we're promoted into a management role, all of our all of our responsibilities will they still stay? Yeah, so we're still accountable for all sorts of things. Um, but then added onto that, we've got this team of different and and fantastic and challenging people that we have to coordinate and and ensure that they stay motivated and able to do the things that they can do. Okay, so we're getting some great we're getting some great responses. Still a few people haven't responded. Go on, get involved. If you haven't put your answer in, do it now. I can see there's two leading. There's two. Oh, it's really tight. It's really tight. Three more. If you haven't put in your answer, do it. I'm going to end the polling in just a second. Five, four, three, two, and one. Right. Let's have a look. Let's share the results. So really close between the top two. Having enough time for everything is a clear winner, followed by managing people, motivating and knowing what to do. Come in, come in as runners up. It's fascinating, isn't it? Because I would completely agree with that. When I've stepped into management roles in, in, in any level and in any time I've taken taken on a new job, that concept of managing my time is, is the hardest thing that I've had to be able to do. And, and part of the reason for that is because you just, you get extra responsibility. And that's what we mean. When you look at the, the, um, the, the writing in blue, it depends on how we get things done through other people because I only have a certain amount of time in a day. I only have a certain amount of things that I can get done personally. So that concept of, of, of having enough time to get everything done, well, let's start looking at what resources we have and how we can use those resources effectively to achieve you know, the tasks that need to be achieved. And, and we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna look at that specific model. And within that comes managing people because I was, I was being a bit cruel there because that's a massive subject. Um, and that's, that's probably the most difficult thing that, that sits within that. And they're all linked. Okay, brilliant, well done, well done. So management. So we've got the skills, okay? The skills of management, common questions for new, for new managers, you know, and we see this all the time, okay? You know, how do, how do you make that good first impression? You know, what do you do? Um, as we've said before, how do you fit it all in? You know, you may have been promoted. You may now have a, um, a whole list of new things you need to do. What do you do? How do you fit all that in? You know, how do you manage people who are older than you? How do you manage people that are significantly younger? All those questions come in. Um, how do you manage friends? You know, how do you take that step up? How do you go from being one of the team to being a manager and, and start to detach and start to be able to take responsibility for other people's actions and performance? You know, what do you do? These are tough things to be able to do. You know, leading people, leading from the front, maintain, motivating people, trying to encourage people to reapply their energy and to stay focused and to stay positive, you know, and it's especially challenging now, you know, um, you know, people are working from home. You can see both Kaylee and I are working from home. I'm, I should have said earlier, if one of my children walks behind me, don't worry, that's just life. Um, and, and, and 
you know, where do I begin? What do I do? I remember I used to, I walked into a role a few years ago and, and I remember sitting down at the desk and, and it's just a mess. Everything was a mess. And I just looked at it and I was new to the organization. I thought, oh no, what do I do? Where do I start? You know, these are all common questions. They're all challenges. So what I would like for you to do now, guys, is, is can you just feed into the chat function what you think um, are common problems and common challenges in management? What sort of things do you find difficult? What sort of things stump you? What sort of things have you run up against that, that you find really challenging? Feed those into the chat function. We'd be really keen to um, to know what what you find what you find a challenge. Um, what do you find you know stops you? Those of you that are brand new to management, what are you worried about? Yeah. What sort of things would you like to learn if you had the opportunity? Pop those into the chat function. What are we getting? What are we getting? Anyone popping in? What, what are the sort of challenges? Oh, here we go. How to manage people of a different style of working. Yeah, good. Communication. Excellent. Uh, working with people who are not on the same level of skills but earn more money. That's a very interesting. That's a very interesting thing, Louise. That's a, that's a different conversation and perhaps a different webinar. Um, it's all about motivation um, and perception. Um, understanding responsibility and working with people who work in different ways to you. Yep. Stepping up to managing a team of people being your peers. Love that. Thank you, Caroline. We'll cover that today. Getting the best out of people with different personality types. Good. Making and sticking to a plan. Fantastic. Well done. You're getting the feel for it now, guys. So all of these things are relevant. We're going to come across, we're going to cover quite a few of these as we go through, as we go through today. Um, and this is all sat in the skills of management. And this is the point. Um, how do you manage people who have not been managed? Excellent, Louise. Um, authority, someone who is more experienced, who may know more than you, might be better than you. Yeah, I've, I've, I've managed plenty of people who know more and are better. That's the point, guys, because the skill in management is the skill in itself. And that's probably the key message from today, because if you can develop the skills that are required for leadership and management, that is your technical skill. And that's what people forget. Sometimes they just think that, you know, you just have to make time and you have to, you know, have a couple of meetings and, and, and you know, allocate some tasks and just check to make sure people are going. But actually, the art and the skill of management is what can truly make you, your teams, and your organizations effective. So what are these skills? Let's, let's, let's draw some of these down. Um, understanding how teams work, understanding how relationships work, encouraging relationships between your team, getting the right people. Yeah, Who do you need? What balance do you need in your teams? How do you get them? Being able to delegate, being able to, to assign tasks, being able to empower people through delegation. It's a, it's a very significant skill. Being able to um, being able to to motivate people, um, being able to understand why people lack motivation, being able to understand why people are not achieving the things they're doing. What's dragging them down? What are the challenges? Yeah, managing people with different ways of working than you. Yeah, that's crucial. It's crucial. Discipline, dealing with conflict, knowing what to do. Um, both intuitively and the right process so that if things go a certain way then we've, we've done the right things um, how to communicate planning decision making problem solving um, and and ultimately underpinning all of this is managing emotions and perceptions of things as well so you can look down that sort of skills list and you can see why actually when people step into management roles they step up into management roles um, people aren't going to know what to do with this straight away they're not going to have these skills straight away you know, uh, people have been working very hard at learning a technical skill, learning a certain thing. This takes time. It takes patience. It takes um, openness and open mindedness. And it takes some direction. It takes some understanding of your strengths and your weaknesses. What do I know? What don't I know? And, and, and this is this is this is lifelong learning, guys. This is stuff that, you know, I'm still learning, you know, 20 years plus in management and I learn every single day and I forget stuff that I've learned and I have to relearn it in a different way, in shape or form. But there are some skills, you know, you can be taught how to delegate. You can be taught how, you know, pe why people react in the way they do, how to balance our leadership styles dependent on the people we have, which is what we'll look at today. So what kind of things do you think we need to know or learn? Again, feed into the chat function before I bring all this up, okay? What sort of things, if you're stepping into a management role, let's say you're going to a new organization or you're stepping up, what kind of things do you think you need to know? What are the important things that you need to make you effective in your role? What do you think? Feed into that chat function. 
We've still got the art. We've still got the um, the skills. What sort of things do you think you need to learn? This is a slightly different question. What might it become? Self-awareness. Excellent. Excellent. The ability to understand and be aware of our emotions and how our behavior impacts others. Great. Love that. Yeah. So some personal inventory stuff. Good. What else? What might you need to know or learn to make you an effective manager? Remember, you're trying to coordinate teams to work together for an organization. Lisa, emotional intelligence. Yeah, brilliant. You can see where this is headed. Yeah, I can see the need here. Um, goals and expectations of team. Love it. Thank you, Bradley. Brilliant. Limitations. What can I do? What can't I do? Excellent. Expectations of the staff. Well done. Love that. Um, skill set of the team. There you go. So you're starting to learn about your team here. You're starting to learn about your people, how your team works together, um, how to communicate. Yeah, communication skills. Brilliant. Love it. Fantastic. So again, we've got that theme. There's a lot we need to be able to develop and learn. What you know? What about the company? What about the organization? Who are we working for? What are the values? Yeah, empathy is coming up. Company and organization performance and standards. Thank you, Caroline. Brilliant, brilliant. So, what are the what's the vision of the company? What are the values? The values are important. Um, one of the first things and the most important lessons that we learn as a manager is if our values as a manager different are so clearly different to the values of the organization, it makes management hard. So we need to understand the vision, the values. What is the company selling? What's the product? Why are they in the market? What are they trying to achieve? And what are the behaviors the company expects? I, what's the culture? How do you fit into that culture? You know, what's the market look like? Who are your competition? You know, these are all important things to know as, as a manager. Who, when we talk about stakeholders, a stakeholder is anybody with an interest in your, in your organization. It can be anyone. You can see the list, customers, managers, other team members, other teams, suppliers, um, government, whoever it is, um, and who influences, who are, who are the people that have influence around? Yeah, it could be members of your team. There could be members of your team that are strong influencers within your team. You know, how do you build those relationships? So you've got to learn your team. You've got to learn what key challenges and issues there are. You know, I used to get sent, I, when, I, when I was working back in my old trade, I would often be put into failing units and I would have to learn what those challenges were. I'd have to learn why the unit was failing and what I could then apply a strategy to, to resolve that. So what are the issues? Yeah. What do people expect from me? I love that you guys got that in there. What are their expectations from a manager? What was the previous manager like? Yeah. What are you like? Yeah, they want to know all this. They don't know any of it yet. You're new, you, you, you're progressing, you know? And even if you're not new, still may not know it. That's a key learning point from, from a manager. You know, do people know, do they know what you expect of them? Have you been clear? And then all of your specific skills that may that may sit with, with that and in that area. So you can see already that there's a huge range of, um, of knowledge, things you need to know. I, I've seen that it's come up in the chat function as well. You know, what's expected from me? That's really important. You know, it's really it's really important to know what kind of things are expected and what time frame I have. If there's something that we need to achieve, and we'll talk about this in just a second. How long have I got to do it? You know, what is my what are my manager's expectations of me? You know, are they clear? Now, if you can see a pattern here, if we look back at the last couple of things, so there's a significant amount of skills we need to be able to employ, and there's a lot we need to be able to learn. The pattern here is that this takes time. And this is another thing. So if you're going into a role, if you're in that role already, what I would encourage you to do, and this is what we'll look at in just a second, is, is to really understand that you need to set yourself some time and don't put too much pressure on yourself. So, and this is something that we teach regularly. Oftentimes when we go into management and we'll look at this when we get into the next slide, when we go into management, we try and hit the ground running and we, we, you know, we, we run at it. Yeah, we run at it. We go through. We we try and get things done. We're very we're very focused on that, ticking things off the box. Isn't that what we call that management space? All this stuff, this is so very important. But when you're learning all these things, how many things are you ticking off the list in terms of what needs to be done? It might not be that many. Don't beat yourself up about that. This stuff is important. So allow yourself time. Um, when you're trying to develop your skills, you know, uh, understand what you do and you don't know. Be honest with yourself about um, what you might need to learn. Yeah, work out a development plan. Speak to your manager. Yeah, work with a mentor. Perhaps you can speak to the old manager of that department. Perhaps they got promoted. You know, talk to them. Yeah, make your own mind up. Make your own decisions, but learn as much as you can. Remember that you're in a learning zone, and that applies to every step in management you take. As soon as you turn that "I need to learn" button off in your head, you will fail as a manager. That's a key learning point. The best managers are those that are always open to learning because 
people can teach us so much even when they don't know they're teaching us you know so allow yourself that time and that's what i meant by that previous slide the success of a manager depends on how we get things done through other people and it's not just about delegating and passing off jobs yeah? it's about encouraging the team to be able to develop and learn and empowering them to progress because that frees us up to learn all the things we need to know so we'll look at a specific model. Now, this model that we're going to look at now is by someone called John Adair. John Adair is um, is is there's there's so much written about management and leadership, which again is because it's 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 a very important skill set. If you think about it, if you actually think about it and take it one step further, and I don't want to get political here, but if you look at um, you know who the president of the United States is, okay, um, we won't even say his name, okay, but he comes from business, which comes from management, yeah. So management actually runs the world you know the big businesses are the ones that feed in so so and this was predicted uh 60 70 years ago um uh by by key management and leadership writers so this stuff is important you know it's, it's powerful stuff so this is a model i wanted to run through with you this is by a chap called john adair who's an excellent excellent writer very functional very easy to understand if you're interested then do check out his books they're really quick they're really easy um i was going to show you one i've got one on the on the on the my library just there um the key thing with John Adair is he breaks things down in a really, really simple way. And this is, a, this is a good model to be able to break down and solve that problem about how do I get it all done? And what do I do? Where do I start? So three, three circles, very simple, task, team, and individual. Okay, so he broke it down and said that to achieve balance in our management roles, we need to focus on three areas, okay, which you can see, task, team, and individual. And this is based around an action-centered leadership approach, okay? And when we say action, it means the stuff that we do, okay? And his idea and his concept is twofold. The idea is we have, we have responsibilities in each area. So if there is a task to be achieved, whatever that task may be, okay? Um, Haley, I, I know what you, you know, I know roughly what you do. So it could be um, setting up a new communication or a new, you know, a new um, brand push, okay? So that could be the task. So it could be a complex task. Now that can't be achieved without a team of people to achieve that task. Yeah? And within that team, you have a number of individuals. Okay. And the idea is that we have responsibilities for each area of this model. And if we can understand those responsibilities and apply the right amount of time in a correct balance, everything works really, really well. And that's what we'll have a look at in, 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 in just a in just a second. So if we were going to try and achieve the task what might we what might we need to do okay so a task is something that we need to to do something that needs to be achieved um it will be uh, measured there'll be a metric behind it okay it, it, the task the collection of tasks will drive the businesses forward they're the things that we innovate through um they could be the selling they could be the product design they could be the release the communications um they could be any element of the business there will be a task that needs to be achieved the bigger tasks will be broken down into a series of smaller tasks. And as a manager, it's our job to make sure that that stuff is done. OK, and this is this is the resource element to it. OK, we need to know what the objectives are. OK, and we need to be able to define those objectives. It can't be fluffy. We need to know what needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. Um, we need to identify what's needed to achieve that task. So our resources, whether they be physical resources, whether they be um, time or, or human resources as well. Any complex task requires a plan. So we need to be able to create that plan and then monitor it and check it. Who's doing what? So let's establish those responsibilities. Who is responsible for which element of that task? This is important. What does a good look like? What are those standards? How do we discharge our responsibilities to the right standards? Do people know? Yeah. A lot of times we see people don't actually know what, what it looks like. Um, and we have to control, we have to maintain performance, we might have to adapt, we might have to adjust. That all sits within managerial responsibilities, okay? We have to report progress, yeah? We'll, we'll have a chain of command. We have to report so that our managers and our, our you know, leaders of our organizations understand how it's all building together. And throughout all of this, we have to review, reassess, and adjust. So these are responsibilities we have towards achieving the task. Now these are very functional, very directive. Um, you know, these are, they, they come within clear parameters, okay? And I've met a lot of managers who are very good at resource allocation, they're very resourceful, okay? Um, but they may not be that good at managing people because it could be a particular technical skill set, okay? And this is the importance of this element. 
What Adair also said is that for each circle, there's a different style of leadership and management that we can adopt. So this is what we need to um, we need to do when we're trying to achieve the task. But we have responsibilities for the team. The team is required to get the task done. Remember, you're now managing a team of people. So, and that's a team of different people, challenging people, people who have their own needs, who have their own lives, who have their own pressures. They may now be separate from you. You may not be within, you know, next to them all day, adding into the complexity of this. But the team exists in and of itself. Okay. So what do we need to do for the team? You know, what, what are our responsibilities here? Well, we have to communicate the standards. We have to agree the standards. If we're talking about building a, a high performing team, we probably have to get the team involved in that in that process. We have to establish a style and the culture of the team. How do we do things? Yeah. What does what are the expectations? Yeah? Now, whilst we're building that team, we really have to monitor, we have to maintain discipline, we have to make sure that the ethics are adhered to until we get to that point where the team is, is driving itself. And we have to encourage that team working, helping each other cooperating with each other, collaboration, holding each other mutually accountable, being able to have enough maturity to, to, to hold someone to task without, without filling it with emotion, yeah? Being able to feed back to people within that team, yeah? Being able to open up and say, I haven't been able to do this, what can I do? Yeah, all these things are about developing collective maturity. Who within that team takes on the leadership roles and when? And that will change dependent on people. So we have to do this. Um, how do we, how does a team communicate? You know, when are our team meetings? When do we do our huddles? You know, what are the processes behind that? And we'll have to lead that. Um, and then feeding back on that team progress and seeking feedback from the team. And remember, this is about the team collectively, not the individual. So that's a whole other set of responsibilities. And can you see the difference that it might require in terms of your leadership style and your capabilities? There's much more communication in here. There's much more encouragement. There's much more participation. Yeah, this is less directive and it's now more participative. So there's a different way we, we address this as leaders. Yeah, there's a different style, a different, slightly different way of thinking. Yeah, and because of that, we might have to allow ourselves time, flexibility. We might have to be able to adapt. We also have to have process in this as well. So then we have responsibilities for an individual. Because obviously a team is made up of people. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it, it doesn't work without this. So what responsibilities do we have? Well, this is this is the people management side. What people are good at, what they're not good at, what they're scared of, you know, what they're happy with. Yeah, what are their aims? What do they actually want to achieve? Yeah, what are their goals in life? And that could be high flying goals, and people want to, you know, they want to, they've got these huge careers planned in front of them, or it might just be to come to work and just be able to do their job, discharge their duties, and go home and focus on other things. And that's all fine. We need to know that. We need to understand that as a manager. We need to be able to help people. We need to be able to put plans in place. Um, we need to be able to help them problem solve, not solve their problems for them, help them problem solve. Um, but we need to be there to support, to support them through challenges. We have to do the management stuff. We have to be able to agree their responsibilities. We have to be able to um, set the right type of objectives. We talk a lot in our training about smart objectives. Um, and we have to follow up on that with consideration, care, tolerance, patience, but direct feedback, yeah? We can't keep people in the dark. We might think that it's easier to not give people feedback because we might hurt their feelings. Well, hurting someone's feelings is all about how we do it. It's not about what we put, you know, there's a difference there. Actually, the worst thing we can do is if someone needs feedback is to not give that feedback. We just have to be careful about how we do that and, and, and the balance we get in there. We have to give genuine recognition we have to give genuine praise and we can't actually do that unless we set the right objectives if we stretch people and challenge people we can then genuinely recognize them for their great achievements yeah and praise isn't just a thank you very much well done great day that's that's powerful stuff but it's you know well done thank you really pulled together today i can see how you helped this person it could be that or it could be you know yeah you've worked so hard i know you didn't get it done i know you didn't quite achieve that element but you have put 110 percent in there Superb, what have you learned from that? This is all powerful stuff. Reward, yeah, people can move through organizations, they can be advanced, they can be given, you know, yes, people can get given pay rises, but not often do we have any control over that at a management level, okay? And actually there's a ceiling to all of that. And, and, and motivation theory suggests that pay is not a great motivator, it's, it's, it's more of a demotivator. So what, how do we reward people? Responsibility, yeah? 
not loading people up, but we can give people responsibility for, for other areas of the business. Sharing what we do, sharing how we lead and manage, yeah? Building them so they can take the next role in the next position if that's what they want. We might reward with greater understanding, yeah? And, and, and supporting them, yeah? So there's different ways that we can reward people. Um, understanding the capabilities and, and, and the strengths. Some people are able to take on things that other people may not. Well, that's fine. We, we, we used to say, um, keep aces in places. So when, when, when you're busy and things need to be achieved, that's when you want your best people in your best place, yeah? But you need to know who they are and what they're good at, yeah? But you also then need to put those plans in place to develop people throughout your, your team. And, and underpinning all of this, uh, you know, is, is, is getting people able to think for themselves um, whilst maintaining an element of authority. That's a big, that's a load of stuff. That's a load of stuff right there. That's how you people manage. Yeah. Now, these, this is, I go back to this again. This is important because these are all the skills you'll need to develop and learn as a manager. And you'll learn it all the time. 75% of your learning learning will come from what we call on the job okay it's when we make mistakes it's when we get challenged it's when we say well maybe i should have done that your challenge and i challenge you all to do this is to go away and when that light bulb moment hits take some time and consider what you have learned i can see we've got something in the chat function um i've lost my mouse um, so i can't do it so i'm just going to go on for now no it's me so don't worry okay thanks kelly okay so let's tie this up in the model so we've had a little look at um at our um our responsibilities for each one of these. Now you can see that, that each responsibility has a different style, a different manner or method of approaching it, okay? So if we're trying to achieve the task, if we need to arrange resources, okay, that's not the time to have a long discussion and consult and get, you know, yeah, we need to make a few phone calls and we need to get the products in and the resources in that we need to do. If we are if we are creating a rotor, for example, we need to get the aces in places, the right the right um, blocks in, it's, it's functional stuff, okay? If we are working with the team, well, that's our communication, that's our engagement, that's our participation, okay? And if we're working with the individual, we might want to take a step back in terms of that, you know, that, that, that motivating and, and influential kind of, kind of stance. We want to be a bit more supportive, yeah? a bit more considerate, considerate, yeah? We might want to take a, take a step back from that managerial kind of podium and start to be a bit more one-on-one. -on -one. So there's different ways of approaching each area. Now, each area is mutually dependent. And all that means is that when you get them all right, it all works together and the, and the whole thing works well, the task is achieved, the individuals are feeling developed and working in the team is, is knitting together. But challenges arise when we spend too much time in one or more than one of the areas without focusing on the whole, okay? And this is the key, this is the nuts and bolts of this model now. We need to look at where those challenges will come. And these challenges can come from your own personality and they can come from your own go-to place and your own skill set. Um, they can come from all sorts of areas. They can come from the team itself. So it might be that you're focusing really well on the task and the team. Okay, so the team is, is, is chugging along. They have their identity. They know what they're doing. Sense of purpose is crucial for a team. The goals and the objectives are being achieved. So you've got some positive, you've got some positive movement here, okay? But we're not spending enough time with the individuals. We haven't, we think everything's okay. This happens commonly. Why wouldn't it? You know, things are being done. The objectives are being hit, the tasks are being done, the team seems to be doing well, but underneath that, there's a, there's a problem building, okay? If we don't spend time with our individuals, we're not learning about them. We're not understanding their strengths and weaknesses. We're not understanding the potential conflict that can't be resolved, okay? Um, people are not feeling valued. Number one, to make someone feel valued, spend good time with them. Not lots, it's not about the amount of time, it's what you do in that time. And then it's what you do after that, okay? So here people may feel, they may feel undervalued. Um, that's then gonna have an impact in the team. People are gonna be in conflict. They're not gonna be holding themselves accountable. They're not gonna be putting that extra little bit of effort in. Um, they may not see a particular future. They may not feel like they can come to you with problems or their other team members. What you get is you get a drop in that team, that team bond, that team spirit. People start working more um, as individuals and some of the team starts to fall apart. Yeah. And, and, and the commitment to those tasks, those challenging tasks you're asking people to do and those goals start to fall down. So if you don't put enough time into the individuals, um, that breaks everything else up. Yeah. And what will also happen is if you really don't put any time into the individuals, people will start to want to move. And then you get that constant move throughout your, throughout your teams of people changing and moving on and you don't get that stability. 
you don't learn how to communicate with people. Someone asked earlier on, you know, how do how do I communicate with people who are different, have different ideas? We have to learn how they receive information. You have to learn how they communicate. You only do that by spending some time with them. Now it might be the other way. So you can see exactly if you don't spend enough time with the team, and again, I see this very regularly, you know, um, lots of task, task oriented behavior. Okay. Results are happening. People individually are getting satisfaction from their work. Lots of time spent with these people. We're, we're talking to them. We're perhaps doing one to ones. Um, we're understanding their individual strengths and weaknesses. We know lots about them. Great. All great. But we're not spending time with the team. Perhaps we haven't run enough team meetings. Perhaps we haven't, haven't challenged the team. Perhaps we haven't built that bond in the team. Um, that then we have a challenge because we don't have a team identity. And what happens is we're not working as a team. We're working as a group. Okay, now a group is a group of people banded together for a common purpose. Your task is being achieved, but they haven't got those team dependent, you know, they haven't got those team behaviors that are so important in, 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 in effective organizations. They're not perhaps supporting each other. They might be competitive with each other. They may not have built those relationships with the other people. Yeah. And you can see that when the team starts to fall, when the team isn't there, you can't achieve your complex tasks. Produces conflict. Yeah doesn't allow us to progress. And you may find that you get some people who are very people orientated, team orientated, lots of time spent developing our individuals, lots of time spent in meetings, lots of time, brilliant, it's great, everything's everything's fantastic. Our team are, you know, are buzzing, um, our individuals are feeling developed, they're feeling looked after, but guess what? Maybe they haven't got enough resources to complete the task. Maybe they don't know what's expected of them, yeah? Maybe they, the, 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 what they need to do isn't clear. Maybe the plan isn't clear, yeah, because we're not putting enough time into that task oriented behavior. Again, hugely demoralizing. And this is where this kicks. It all links. If the team are not completing the tasks that they are designed to complete, that has a massive de, it demoralizes the type team and it demoralizes the individuals within that team. You can't get the achievement and the recognition that is so important to continued motivation. People become frustrated. People will then move into conflict. Then trust breaks down. Yeah? And then you have a challenge. And the ultimate end of that is people walking away. This is where the ultimate end is. People walk away, or I've seen managers walk away because it's just too much. Okay. Cool. I'm not doing a very good job of building up here, am I? Um, look, the point is that actually, whilst there's lots and lots of elements to this, the idea is really simple. If we can keep this in the sweet spot, which sits right in the middle of all of these three things, um, then everything works perfectly. Okay. You know, we've got individuals are feeling developed. They're feeling listened to. They feel like they have a voice. Yeah. They feel like they have a voice. They feel satisfied about their work. You're building trust. The team spirit is, is strong. People know they can go to each other, not just you. We said 54% of you polled that we haven't got enough time. Well, a great way of releasing time is to get people working together as in a team because they'll go to each other as well as you. Yeah, Your team culture and your team spirit will, will help solve problems that otherwise you might be pulled in to solve. Well, that releases time, doesn't it? Yeah. So the team are working well. People are collaborating. They're helping each other. They're holding each other accountable and themselves accountable. That then means that the more you, you can complete tasks, the, the task can become more complex things start to happen. Mistakes are anticipated. Challenges are anticipated. Things will still go wrong. They always do. Yeah. But you haven't got to throw blame around. People aren't throwing blame. I mean, that's the key. You know, if you've got a situation where blame is being chucked around, you've, you, one of these areas is not being looked after correctly. These are the indicators. So I'm just going to check time very quickly because I don't wear my watch today. Right. So, so this is this is the challenge that we have. We have a number of things that we can do. The first thing is recognize your personality. Okay. And it isn't a slide on this. So if you have a personality and you're quite, you know, you're quite about, you're all about the detail, you're quite introverted, you're really resourceful, you like to get things done, you like things to be done, you're really in charge. Yeah, you like to achieve things, you may find that you zone in too much on the task. Yeah. If you're worried about how you speak to people and, 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 and conflict and what if they say this and what if this goes, you might spend too much time in the task because it's just natural. We tend to avoid things that we're worried about. So, so what I would say is um, be aware of your strengths and weaknesses and start to anticipate what, where you might spend too much time. As you may have guessed already, I'm fairly good at talking. So I would spend a little bit too much time with the team and individual. 
Um, and, 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 and what that meant is I generally had quite a good team spirit. And I generally, you know, I would always always spend, you know, a lot of time with the individuals, but the individuals could then drag my time away. You know, and I actually experienced this in a, in a, in a role that I did a few years ago where I did struggle a little bit. And, and part of the reason I struggled is because I was in charge of delivering some fairly complex tasks. And I was putting too much time into the individuals and a bit too much time in the team and the tasks weren't being delivered, or some of them anyway. So we have to be aware of that. So we have to, and this is a great way of managing our time. Now I've coached people before on this. And what I've said is have a look at your working week. This is a great idea, okay? Just have a look at your working week. Where's your time scheduled? Where's it going? Because you should really be looking at, and my maths is terrible, 33.33% of your time <laughs> in each area. If you look at your working week and you see, well, I've got 80% in task oriented stuff, yeah, or I'm off doing higher level meetings and thinking about strategy, what's my team doing? What are the individuals in that in that in that group doing? Has everyone ever had the the, the request come around? And say, right, it's appraisal time. Does anyone ever wince? Oh, that's just added to my workload. That means you're spending too much time in the task area. Can you see, guys, can you see how this one works out? So really simple. What are my task responsibilities? What are my individual and what are my team responsibilities? And am I spending enough time? That's a great way of knowing where to start. And it's a great way of managing your time. Um, I'm going to share these slides with Kayleen, who I'm sure will share them with you as well. So this is this is all for you to take away. So a couple of um, couple of things that this will hopefully help you um, with some of the, the challenges you put in earlier on. Number one. Um, how do we learn to work through others? Because that's how we can free up our time to manage ourselves and our teams effectively. Well, here's the best and best bit. Share your knowledge. Yeah, Don't hold on to it. That's the sign of an insecure manager and a leader. Share your knowledge. Don't overshare because people don't want to know it. But where you know it's right, share your knowledge, share your skills, share your experience. That's a great way of developing relationships and building trust and encouraging people to continue to develop. Just be balanced in your approach. Start to delegate, think about um, who can get this done rather than what do I need to do to achieve this? This is a great mindset check. Okay, and here's, here's, I want you to try this when you get back into your, into, your, into your work zones. Next time a difficult email comes through and you know that email's loaded with extra tasks or responsibilities. Okay, I had one come through this morning. Yeah, check your mind. Yeah, what's the first thing that goes to your mind? Oh no, I've got to get this done. You're still focusing on yourself. Who's best to do this or how can I use this to develop my team? That's the right kind of thinking. Yeah, simple stuff. Guide, coach your team in their work. Yeah, be there, be available. There's, a, you know, we, we often talk about management by walking around. Um, I couldn't underestimate this enough. You know, you have to be able to guide and coach. You have to be able to see what your people are doing, but you have to do it in a way that fits. Some people will need more checking on than others. That's fine. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, you know, you can do that and you can be more directive in your style. You can tell people why you're doing it. Some people prefer it. Some people prefer to be told what to do. That's absolutely fine. Some people need, want to be left alone. It's your call to work out whether they can, but you need to guide and coach your team in their work. Yeah. And that's something that you need to plan into your time. Praise and feedback and do it in a timely way. Learning to work through others, you're going to be challenging others to take on a bit more responsibility. Yeah, what you have to strike is the balance here. You do not want to be just shuffling tasks onto people. What you don't want to do is just be pinging emails out as you come through. Okay, you need to be making this part of your style. Okay, so people need to know what's expected of you as a manager, and if they know that you are constantly challenging them to develop and go through their own personal growth, and this all comes down to your own motivations. Okay. Then when they complete the things that you're asking them to do, you must be able to give the right kind of praise that's directed, it's targeted, it shows that you've thought about it, and you have to be able to feedback, and you have to be able to feedback at the right time. And that means not holding back on something because you're worried about how to do it. You check whether the environment is right, and you check whether the, the, um, the person is ready to receive that feedback. But other than that, you need to feedback when you're, when you're doing it because you're developing people. Leadership and management, weirdly, is a development role. It's one of the reasons some of the best people in L&D come from leadership and management because the best leaders and managers are those people that can combine strategic thinking, um, emotional intelligence, and a desire to coach and lead other, to train other people. And that's hugely important, you know? Go out, share this knowledge with people because that will really, really help. Look, you've got to make sure people have the right tools and resources. And if they don't, you need to communicate to them what the, what the challenges are and, and perhaps when they'll be when they will be 
uh, available. Okay, um, give people an out. Um, never hide something. Never sit on something because you don't know how to communicate it. Okay, um, be open and honest with people. They'll value that. Um, but give them an out. Remember, you're the leader. Accept that your team will approach things differently than you would. And this came out earlier on. Just accept it. That's your first point. People are going to do things differently to me. And I see this time and time again. I'm in the middle of a difficult coaching session with someone who just can't do it, just can't work out why people won't work to his level. I'll tell you why, because only about 0.05% of the world will work to his level. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, so we've got to accept that. And all we have to do is set those parameters and those boundaries and coach people to hit those parameters and boundaries. Understand people's limits. Understand how they work and understand how to communicate to them. And that leads, you know, track the performance, track, um, you know, how people are getting on both individually, okay? And you do this for your one-to-ones and your appraisal system. And I always, I tend to view towards one-to-ones because it's that regular contact time you need. Um, and track team performance, you know, understand that the team need that performance um, feedback just as much as the, um, as the individuals do. That sense of team identity is built through the team success. The individuals feed into that. You use a sports analogy, if you will, okay? Um, and make sure that those goals and objectives are clear. They're measurable, yeah, and you feed back on those as well. Um, deal with your performance issues quickly, okay? And if you don't know how to do it, because this is a big area, then seek support from either other people around you who know what to do or your HR department. Um, make your, you know, help your team be the best that they can be. Be mindful that you're not, and this is again really important. You're not creating clones of yourself. You're creating individuals. Another challenge that I see happening regularly is where people um, don't have enough time. Um, uh, people don't have enough time because people keep coming to them with problems. And, and, and that's really interesting because actually what we're trying to do is encourage people to problem solve because that's development. Okay, that's the idea. Um, if we can get people to start to problem solve for us for themselves, they learn, they develop, and it, it frees up your time. Okay, that's about being the best that they can be. So don't think that you have to be the problem solver for your team. That's not your role. Yeah, your role is to manage the resources and problem solve on that element, but you you help them to problem solve. Caroline has just asked me to um, repeat the three key, three key qualities of strong leaders. Um, I'm not sure that I can, Caroline. <laughs> Whilst a lot of this is, is written, a lot of it is also just through, I'll come back to that at the end if you don't mind, and we'll certainly talk about that. Um, you know, and, and this, is, this is huge, you know, you're a role model. In a leadership management role, um, whether you like it or not, people are looking to you. They're making their, their value judgments on what they can do and how they behave and how they communicate based on how you do it as well. Yeah, so just be aware of that. And that's actually more powerful at the unconscious and subconscious level than it is at the conscious level. Everyone knows that they can put on a show. It's those little things. It's, it's those things that you do when um, people aren't, you know, you don't think people are watching. That's what people really get information from. And that's actually one of the challenges people are going through at the moment because people aren't getting those, those, those unconscious clues, those unconscious signals. And what happens is it slows the building of trust. It's why when we work from home and we're doing things virtually, we start to have issues and we get more self-doubt and our self-esteem can get eroded because we lose some trust in our relationships. Fascinating stuff. You're a role model. So how can you support others in their career and their progressions? I'm just keep checking the time. Okay, we're perfect. We're perfect. I love that. So from colleague to manager, okay? This is another thing that is, that is very, very difficult, okay? Sometimes we have to make a transition where we have been in a leadership position within a team, but it could be a nomin, you know, it could be a leadership position where we've used our skills, our relationships, our passion, our natural personality, but we're not actually in a defined position of authority, okay? So the point being is, if you look at the teams you've got around you and you look at those people who naturally step up and they're the voice and they're the communicators and they have a good intention, it's not the loudest, so not the people who, you know, who make the most noise, the most action. It's those people who really encourage and support and try and, sh and show care and understanding. They're your leaders of the future. But when you then take that step up, suddenly you're accountable, you're responsible, and that expectation changes instantaneously. Okay. And that's something that can be very difficult to understand. The first thing I would say about this is, is, is do be under no illusion that the relationships you have with those people in your team have changed. You know, and there's no sugarcoating around this, okay? It, when you have, perhaps you have some very good friends in your team, you can still be friendly with people. You can still have friends. That's, that's fine. But you've got to understand that the nature of that relationship has changed and there will be a change process. And that will involve um, a change in expectations. There'll be some emotions attached to that. 
so the way to do this is to is to address it from the front be clear about how those relationships may change okay um be clear about your expectations and what's needed from the teams and the individuals set those expectations early okay manage those expectations but also set those expectations for yourself okay and it's a two-way game okay what we do not say is don't go in full of authority and jump in two feet first that's not the way it's not the way to do it you know small wins quick wins build those trusted relationships when you get promoted or you come into a new team you're in a different role your relationships have changed people have gone if you get promoted from team member through to the manager or the team leader um, and you have very trusted relationships be aware that those will have changed the dynamic will change because you're now responsible for their progress yeah? you feed up the chain so it, that dynamic has changed so we need to be aware of that this is really important we talk about a trust model that trust model very in a very sort of a simple way is about developing credibility i.e that you're you're able to perform and about um uh showing genuine care for your team so it's kind of like a you know it's the standard management you know double axing so establish some credibility and that isn't necessarily credibility about being able to be the best the fastest the quickest that's a common problem i see you gotta forget that stuff your credibility now is about how you lead and manage what do the team need what quick wins can we do i i went into a um <laughs> one of my i used to run a, a pizza delivery unit it sounds ridiculous but it was a it was a new it was a new thing back in the 90s in london and it was hugely busy you know, it was and it was a, and and i remember taking on the responsibility it was tough you know they'd been poorly managed and i took on that responsibility and the, and the manager the owner of the company said to me he says get them something achieve them something so we got them some lockers yeah i know it sounds ridiculous but that was our quick win that's it because it showed that i could manage resources and i had influence that started to build those bridges towards trusted relationships yeah you don't have to go out and buy lockers that's not the message of today but you need to do something to establish that credibility and this is the most important thing i'm going to say to you today okay never over promise don't over promise and we have a it's so tempting to try and over promise because we're trying to get people to respect and like us because we want to be integrated and that can be very deceptive and very subtle the challenge is that we'll try and promise things that actually we genuinely want to do them and we mean that we'll do them and all of a sudden we kind of go whoa i've got all this to do and we suddenly don't follow through on some individual commitments and promises there's nothing more harmful to your credibility to, than that so so be careful about what you promise think carefully take your time and make promises you know you can keep deliver on your commitments and take the time give yourselves a break take time to work through those transition issues and i would really recommend getting a mentor or a coach, speak to the manager who was there before. Um, make sure that you've got lines so that you're not isolated and you're not on your own. Um, these are really, really crucial elements. So um, just to finish that, that element off, you know, this is the mindset. You know, you're the manager. You can't remain friends with people. You've got to maintain that peer-to-peer -peer relationship. You can be friendly, you build trust, you can have wonderful relationships, but you are the manager. You take accountability. And your team expects that. They need that. Yeah, there may be some mourning for, for the loss of a friend. OK, and that's the emotional sort of thing you need to be able to, to, to manage your way through. But you have to set those standards and be the leader in your team. And when you, if you fail to do that and it's cloudy and you don't make you know, the right sort of decisions consistently, then you'll, you'll grow insecurity in the team. Um, uh, so, so, guys, that's pretty much it for today. Um, I'm, I'm usually terrible with time um i think today I'm not too bad um so I, I guess i'll open it up to questions really um i know we've got one from caroline about the the three qualities of strong leaders um that's a fairly big question i would say that um for me um and it depends where you come where you come from this but but leaders have different styles uh, th three different types of styles you could do would be directive you know directing people what to do um participative involving people in things um supportive um you can step back i think qualities of strong leaders are huge i think trust um understanding and wanting to help develop and care for people is huge um and being decisive one of the key things about being a leader and a manager is we have to make decisions that underpins everything and we will make the wrong decisions regularly um but if we make the wrong decisions for the right intentions, then that is a quality of a good leader. Um, yeah, so so please fire in any questions. I'm aware that people are busy. You've got busy lives. You've got a couple of minutes left. I always talk too much. That's the way of it. So yeah, okay. over to you, Kelly.
if anyone wants to verbally ask a question because i appreciate they can take a while to write then just um pop in the chat function just say me and i can um give you not the authority but the permission to verbally ask or like we said pop it in the q a i'm just quickly reading what Haley's put in the chat function Okay, so Haley has said, is there a top tip for maintaining team identity when all working remotely? Yeah, communicate. Communicate as a team and don't just communicate about the task. Remember that type of communication can, it, it's very functional. Um, and we need to, we need to, with a team identity, identity, it's a 360 degree thing. So I would say, um, uh, set yourself some, some times when you get together, make them both functional, but also have times where you get together and you don't have to talk about work. You know, you can just get together and just, 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 you know, have coffee time or cake time or anything like that, you know, um, challenge your team, consider what you're trying to get the team to do. Um, make yourself available and encourage perhaps groups within the team to communicate with themselves as well. Um, so that's another really important element where that would be done naturally in the office. Um, perhaps people aren't doing it. So, so find out what they need, find out what their challenges are and encourage them to come up with ideas and be open to the responses for that, if that helps. Best way to integrate new members into an established team. Thanks, Laura. Great question. Um, I recognize that it takes time. Um, uh, you need to, um, I would always say that, that, that assigning them someone or getting them to, to work with someone who is good with people and understands the role, a bit of a mentor kind of thing is, is very helpful. Don't overload them, spend time with them, but also get them to spend time with, with other people in the team. Um, slowly start to challenge. Don't do that thing where, where oftentimes people they, they kind of hold back, hold back, hold back. And then actually after six weeks gone, there you go, get on with it. it, it sort of build that into it. Um, got quite a few coming through actually. Yeah, there's um, one that I just want to, there's just one more and I appreciate this might put us a little bit over, but I think it's a very valid question. And um, so Adam has said within the team um, I have, there is one individual that is more difficult to manage. Spoken to the previous manager for advice, I came from being a consultant to branch manager, working with him for around six years and find it hard to tell him what to do. Any advice? <laughs> I think that's a great uh, ending question. That's a, that's a brilliant question to end with. Look, it's big stuff. Um, OK, so you've worked with this person for around six years. That's a long time. Um, I would say that you need to think from so what, something we call triple perspective. A triple perspective means looking at it from your perspective, what you need to do, what you're doing, but also from their perspective as well. Um, so I would say, and you're not going to like this, but I would say try and understand how they are looking at that whole situation. What are their what are their what is their opinion of you? How might they be feeling? Um, what do they need from you? Um, uh, how was your relationship before? Um, were they difficult before? Think about all those kind of things about this particular person, okay? Um, and then I, what I would do is I would involve your, you know, speak, try and speak to someone with a, with a different perspective. I would start to make things as objective as you can. So start to make things about what needs to be achieved and set regular monitoring times. Ultimately, people can be very difficult. This is a test of your management and leadership, and this is a test of the authority that you actually do have. If you are struggling, um, then you need to go sort of back to basics, really. Communicate in a way that suits their needs, which is what you get by thinking about them. But don't shy away from setting clear objectives, and don't shy away from measuring those objectives as well. I know it sounds very management, but for example, if you've asked them to do a certain thing in a certain way, then say, right, a couple of weeks, what I'd like to do is just have a catch up and see how you do it. Remove your emotion from it. Your biggest problem with that, Adam, is your own emotions. OK, and I know that because that's I've been there myself. Um, and then what you need to do is performance management effectively. Um, so you and that's a, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. So remove your emotions, set the right pathway for monitoring and following up, encourage, coach, guide but hold to account when you need to as well. If it gets too much, 
by doing that process, you're building the pathway for asking help from someone else as well. But that's a test of your authority. And there may not be a right answer. It's not It's not magic. Do you know what I mean? It might be that you have to think of other things as well. I hope that helps, Adam. Thank as you. Well. And I'm sorry, I knew it would put us over, but I thought it was such a good question from Adam and one that I feel a lot of people probably encounter throughout their management um, life. So yeah, just to say thank you so much for joining us now this afternoon. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I know I learned a lot from it. Um, hopefully it stopped raining in Suffolk and um, people who have next week off, the weather is kind to you. Um, Alex, do you just want a final farewell before we end? Yeah, thanks guys. It's been brilliant. I love I love doing these webinars. Thanks Kayleen for, for having us. Um, we're going to do them fairly regularly, so please do keep your eye out. Look, a, a, a massive bit of self-plugging. We're running our management course. It starts in November. If you fancy it, if you're interested in it, if you know people, then give us a shout because we can, we can help out as well. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'm glad I hope you've picked some stuff up as well. I can see by some of the feedback that it seems to be pretty good. So yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And just to reiterate, I'll share a copy of Alex's presentation along with the information um, for their essential management course as well. So yeah, just to say, see you later. Enjoy your Friday afternoon, your weekend, and next week if you've got it off. Um, see you later, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, bye.